So here we're going to talk about line spectra. And the concept is actually quite familiar to most everybody in that line spectra is just another form of emission spectra. And emission spectra is what you see every single time you go and see a fireworks show. What you're basically doing when you're seeing a fireworks show is you're seeing various chemicals inside of an explosive that goes up and each element in your firework gives off different colors. So what you need to understand about light is that your eyeballs take all of the light that you see and combines them. So for example, if you see white light, it's actually a combination of several different colors of light. The reason we get fireworks of different colors is because the elements of each component of the firework gives off different colors. So there is actually no such thing as white light. Our brain actually takes multiple colors and combines them to form the light that we actually see. So when we see white light, what we're actually seeing is a combination of red light and orange and yellow and green and blue and purple. What we can do though, however, is take white light and either put it through a prism, which I've shown here, or through a diffraction grating, which does essentially the same thing. And what it does is it takes the light that is coming into the prism and separates it into its individual wavelengths. So we can see sort of a rainbow color coming out outside of the prism. And so here is another way of thinking about it, or just sort of another picture. So we have our white light coming in, and we have multiple colors sort of coming out the back end. Now, again, if we're watching fireworks, fireworks represent we're taking elements and what is happening is the electrons in each individual element are being excited by the explosive and the electrons are jumping up to a higher energy state and then after the explosive sort of like tapers off and the energy from the explosive tapers off these electrons give off energy and they fall down to a lower energy state and that's how we get our color the color is given off by the difference in the energy states between the excited state and the lower state. And each atom gives off a different color because it's a different energy. So if we were to take our firework and actually run it through the, the light that comes off the firework, we might see something that looks like this. In that the, the light that comes in, if we were to separate it through a prism, we might actually see that there's actually red light and blue light, which then combines in our brain to form, I think it's yellow, but that's not important right now. The important thing is, is that what we see is a combination of all the light colors that come off. But if we send it through a prism, we can see sort of the individual components. So this particular color, whatever color is coming in, it is separate. It's actually, we're actually seeing red light and blue light, which our brain sort of combines to form whatever color is over here. Now we can do this with every single element. So what this basically is, is a listing of the line spectra for each individual for, uh, for six, seven different elements. So if we were to take lithium as an element and sort of excite it, whether it be like putting it into a, a firework or we can electrify it and put it into what's called an emission tube and then take that emission just like here, take that emission and we run it through a prism or a diffraction grating, what we'll see is we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So what that means is that lithium has five energy levels that are spaced out certain differences from various electron levels. So the electrons can go from a, a five state down to a three state, and that might be might correspond to a color of red, and a, or a two state down to a one state, that might correspond to a yellow. We have all these different, various different colors. Now when we look at lithium sort of in a firework or in an emission tube, we only see one color, but it's, again, a combination of a little bit of this, 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 and a little bit of this. Now, of course, the lithium, when we excite it, put a bunch of electricity into it, and it jumps to these higher energy levels, it gives off many more colors that are outside of this range. But between about 350 nanometers and way up here at about 800 nanometers, or 770 nanometers, that's what our eyeballs can see. So there are other lines, there are other colors, if you will, these, each of these elements are giving off, but we can't see them just because our eyeballs are not tuned to that very narrow frequency. 
So we look at sodium here, in the entire visible spectrum, there's actually only two lines that we see, and those two lines are actually very close in frequency, and they're yellow. That's why if you go and look at uh, many street lights are sodium lamps, and they have sort of a yellowish tint to them. And potassium has several different ones, rubidium has several different ones, and then down here we have neon, we have an incredibly large number. And again, there are frequencies sort of outside of the visible range, so to the left and to the right on this scale, if you will. So what this allows us to do is sort of identify differing elements in an emission spectra, allowing us to identify the components of what's in it. And so one of the practical applications of this is for us to actually look at things like stars and allow us to determine what the stars are made up of. So the take-home message here is that each element gives off different colors when they are excited. And the difference in those colors, or the difference in the, the frequencies, are a function of the colors of photons that the elements give off when they are excited. So each element has its own separate energy levels where the electrons are allowed to be. Because the electrons are only allowed to be in certain quantized levels. So this is sort of our practical application in terms of looking at what we're going to call electronic structure, where these energy levels are. The energy levels are all different in different elements because of the fact that they have different numbers of protons and different numbers of electrons.